<sighs> it's uh, another late start to the day today. It's like almost 1 p.m. And I've spent the last like two hours scrolling Instagram and being on my phone. So I'm feeling pretty <laughs> disappointed, I guess. But hopefully we can salvage the day and go explore and see what's up and see what we see. Oh man, that was pretty good and really cheap. I spent nine kwai, two kwai for the drink, seven kwai for the noodles. So that means the noodles would have been one dollar UST and the uh, little apple juice would have been like, I don't know, 25 cents, 35 cents. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm feeling much better. I wish I could capture more, but I should probably get like a, a tripod or something so I can set up my phone and just record with more ease. Um, but the guy was really nice. Um, we started chatting a bit. He's from uh, Hunan, which is another province in China. A lot of um, people in Shenzhen, in the area around Shenzhen, and I guess just in cities in general, um, it's a lot of intra international migration. A lot of people coming from from other provinces to the major cities to work. Um, and I think Shenzhen is the most migrated city in China. From what my friends tell me. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, the guy was super nice. He offered me free soup if I wanted it, but I refused. And they're just asking me about where I'm from and complimenting my Chinese and my chopstick skills, which are pretty standard uh, <laughs> experiences if you're in China and can speak Chinese and use chopsticks. So if you know how to use chopsticks, you're you're already ahead of the game. The people will love you here. But yeah. So I was in this area twice yesterday. Once during the day in that market area where I ate lunch and stuff. And then at night I went for a stroll with my friend, Chinese friend. Um, and we kind of walked around and ended up at like a people's park, which I had some uh, clips of probably at the beginning of this video. But I'm thinking I'll go check it out during the day, see if there's any activity and what's going on there uh, during the day. But yeah, right now I'm going through these alleyways, kind of. There's smaller alleys that look a little more residential and worn out. But my friend was telling me, or yesterday, he didn't want to walk down these alleys because he said it might be unsafe. And so, but I've never been to a place in China that feels unsafe, so I guess I'm looking to tempt fate a little and see what I can find out here. And it's daytime, should be fun.
a barbed wire school so that those punk kids can escape. Houses seem to be really old, made of like a dirt material or something. A lot of these brick ones are looking really ancient. I guess all this wandering around has produced the desired result, which is I have no fucking clue where I am. But there's some really cool shit right here. Like a large version of that shrine I saw yesterday. This is really cool. For those who might not know, that is a uh, Mao Zedong. Wow. This is pretty sick. I had asked my friend if he knew of any temples in Dongguan or like historical sites and stuff and he didn't really know of any but I imagine this is one because this looks really old and really cool I wonder if it's someone's private temple or something because it looks like it's closed, it's locked For those of you familiar with like uh, the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos in Mexico, Chinese have a similar kind of thing. They do a lot of um, offerings where they typically will put like food and typically like a person's favorite food, someone that passed away, like they give them their favorite food, like an offering, a small offering, and then maybe like a baijo, like alcohol or beer or something. Um, not seeing much else other than water although in there you can get a better view there's a lot of apples and stuff like that um, but out here I only see rice
not really sure what's going on right now, but I've made some friends with uh, some two random uh, grandma and grandma, <laughs> a grandma and a grandpa here. I've just been talking to them for the past like 15 minutes. I can understand like 20% of what they say. They can understand like 20% of what I say. I might, maybe like 50% of what I say. What I say. But basically we've established that I'm American, my parents are Mexican, they're from here. And we talked about like the temple and I don't know what, but they told me to join them for a walk, I think. <laughs> I think that's what they said. But I'm just gonna walk in the same direction as them and see what else we see. <laughs> They told me to film it because it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a <laughs> really strange experience, um, but really awesome. We could not really understand the whole too much of what we were saying. But I think they were pointing me in this general direction to see some more cool stuff. So, and I think this is the square I was at yesterday, so I guess everything's falling in place. Let's take a look. So this is the uh, local people's square. A lot of uh, activity here at night, but it seems like during the day, it's just grandpa's hanging out. And some aunts and uncles maybe but it's a cool area they have this huge stage where they were doing like dancing and stuff it looks like there's like a temple in there where a bunch of people were playing mahjong or something and um there's a playground over here and also a um basketball court oh man it's been such a strange day and uh I guess a true testament to, uh, I don't know, just kind of like when you're in a rut, I mean I was in a rut this morning and I didn't feel like vlogging even really, oh shit, I think I see a temple, um, but yeah, I mean you just go out there and you start talking to people, you feel more connected and more alive and it just felt like, uh, I don't know, it's just such a mood boost and it gave me the spark I needed to, to want to do more, to explore more, to seize the day. I see another cool temple over here, so I think I'll go check that out and I'll see how much more bandwidth I have. It's already been such a crazy weird day. <laughs> to sit down and process everything that's happened and realize it's literally been like an hour and a half I think since I left my house and it just makes me think it's, it's so crazy how much can happen when you just go out and do shit I guess oh man Communism billboards and stuff. I translated one of them and it was talking about adherence to, I guess, like 
developing technologically, like focusing on rapid development and something. Um, but yeah, I've seen these a lot more in the rural areas and a lot more in northern China. In Shenzhen itself, I actually haven't really seen that much. Um, but maybe I wasn't really looking for it in my first year as much. But yeah, it tends to be more common in like rural areas and like industrial areas. Um, but yeah. A lot of uh, Cantonese ladies, aunties, playing, uh, I think, mahjong or a card game or something back there. <sighs> Looks like they're having a lot of fun. Um, and uh, there was a table there that looked like it had ingrained on it the setup for mahjong or some, some sort of game. But, yeah. The parks are pretty cool. That one back there had a lot of, um, like, uh, like outdoor workout materials, more for like stretching and stuff. A lot of older people will come out and like just do stretching. This one here has um, ping pong table, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Be leaving Dongguan today, and uh, I mean it's wild that it's only been like two or three days here. Um, but I'm really glad I came. Like I, I had never really even heard of it before. I just knew that it existed. And funnily enough, I feel like like that castle place I was at apparently is like one of the top attractions. My friend just happened to live pretty nearby, and um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's been a lot of uh, serendipity, you could say. Um, just a lot of really cool, random experiences, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been cool. And it's going to be a place that I remember probably for a long time because it's the first real test of vlogging in a new, a new place, although still in China. But there's a lot of China that I want to explore. I want to go to a lot of the places that no one really goes to, or at least go to the places that aren't as touristy, near touristy, like that are near touristy places. Um, <clears throat> But, yeah.
just had a really tasty cheap meal and a good conversation with the Laoban, the owner. But um, I was kind of just relaxing and sitting there and reflecting. And uh, it was, um, I don't know, almost a little, I was feeling a little emotional almost. It's um, really incredible how connected you can feel to someone or like to people that are just so different from you. I mean, the language is so different, the customs so different, government so different, the ideologies, religion, values, spiritualities, I mean, <sighs> everything. But I guess at the end of the day, we're all human and maybe that's part of uh, the ethos of this channel. <sighs> So yeah, I'll be leaving Dongguan today. It's been about two and a half days here, I think. And I mean, it's been a blast. And maybe someday I'll come back, who knows? <sighs> Thanks for watching and take care.